Hi everyone, it's Amanda. It is the 25th of June 2018 and I am sitting here going to make a video on Dr. Masaro Emoto. And it's come about very spontaneously today as these things tend to, which is that I've been catching up on my paperwork and I was thinking about some elemental work that I'm going to be doing in Canada in September and um, I, I saw I wrote something down where it's almost like for the first time I claimed that Dr. Emoto is one of my guides although I've known he's one of my guides for a while but it was almost this act of putting those words down on paper suddenly he was like oh he's here again because <laughs> it's happened a few times in this room and um, his presence is very palpable and here. So I heard myself say, okay, I'll do a video, I'll channel Dr. Emoto for us tomorrow. And then it's like, no, it's gonna have to be today. So I've literally dropped what I was doing and I'm gonna see what comes through, guys. Just lighting some incense here. And I'll tell you a little bit about my story with Dr. Emoto before we get going, because I just want to welcome his energy into my room more than anything. So I'm assuming you know who Dr. Masaro Emoto is. Um, for those of you that don't, just a quick little resume about him. Uh, this is his book, um, which is very well, very well known. Um, Dr. Masaro Emoto, Japanese scientist. He spent his whole life, or a lot, but certainly a large portion of it, large portion of his life, looking at the fact that water carries messages. So. Um, if you understand that, then you can do a lot to heal both yourself and the world because we are made up of 70% water. So the messages that we say to ourself, um, we become, you know, if you wake up every day and you tell your body that it's fat, ugly and useless um, and ill, hey, what a surprise. It's going to listen to that and become even more so. If you wake up in the morning and can remind your body that you love it, um, that it is beautiful, that it is healthy, um, etc. Um, it becomes that. We are what we think. So his work was groundbreaking and the book, as I say, if you don't know the book, maybe get it. It's called The Hidden Messages in Water. I teach about this in one of my workshops that I do, which is the Elemental Workshop. Um, where we look at the water element. So anyway, he's like, he's here big time today. And I thought, okay, well, I wonder why. What does he want to say? What does he want to convey? Um, but I will just say a little bit about my relationship with him, um, which is that I met him a year before he died. And I've got this lovely photograph here that I'll show you. Some of you have seen this before. So there's me, a little bit thinner then. Um, and there's my good friend, Clara, and she runs uh, Chi Time Radio and um, she um, invited me to interview him. And so we did it, to, we did it together, she did it as well. And as I say, it was a year before he died. Whenever I show this photograph, people always comment on the fact that his body language and my body language are identical. <laughs> we're holding our, we're crossing our knees and holding our hands in exactly the same position, it's quite funny. Um, also, there's quite an interesting thing with birthdays with us three sitting here because Dr. Emoto's birthday was July the 22nd. Mine is July the 23rd. And I'm pretty sure I'm right in saying that Clara's is July the 24th. I think I'm right in saying that. So there we all are. You know, it's like ABC of birthdays. Um, certainly him and me, there's quite a close um, astrological link anyway because I'm very watery being on the cusp of Cancer Leo. Um, so yes, I interviewed him and he was very much um, instrumental in giving me the final confidence to go off and make the, um, <clears throat> the, the, the sprays that I make now, which are healing sprays linked to Archangel Metatron and um, which ob obviously have within them a major component, which is water, as well as essential oils and crystal essence. And, you know, they've obviously been activated with sacred geometry, etc. 
um, but the basic premise is there's water and it's blessed water and water does what you tell it to do as he always taught and he always said to me as well make sure you know water has to be told what it is though so on all of my bottles there is a either uh, a piece of sacred geometry in the shape of something like Metatron's cube um, so here's one this is the midnight indigo so this has got the Metatron's cube um, sacred geometry on it or with this one which is the water elemental we've got a piece of channeled art by Jane Delaford Taylor which is the dolphins um, and obviously it's also got Metatron's name on it it also has the fact on the back that it says it's made with love, it's handmade with love. You know, all these things go into it to create it what it is, as well as on the base of the bottle, on, on increasingly on a lot of our new old bottles, we're trying to add these little stickers. This is the flower of life on the, bottle of the, on the bottom of this one, okay? So all of that, you know, he was instrumental in helping me to achieve what I've achieved with the sprays and with the healing tools. Um, so I owe him a big debt. Um, I Then he died, which was very sad for the world, to be honest, because we left a leading light. We lost a leading light. And it was it was tragic in many ways because he, he obviously, I felt like he still had a lot to give. Obviously his time was complete on the earth plane. He'd done what he was here to do. It's up to the rest of us now to carry on his work. Um, but one of the last questions in the interview I did with him, I asked him about, um, he was going to start experimenting with regard to um, what does, what do different colours do to water. So he'd already proven that if you say, or you state to water, you know, things like, I hate you, you're ugly, you know, evil, devil, any horrible words, horrible energies, the water produces very distorted crystal, line shapes which he photographed and it's all documented in his book and if you said to it something you know beautiful like I love you I forgive you um, the, the um, pictures of the crystals as on the one in the front were symmetrical beautiful healthy all the rest of it so his next stage was to, was was going to be about looking at how what color did to water um, what different crystals looked like in different colours of water, which would have been fascinating, wouldn't it? Um, so I'm really hoping that somebody carries that tradition on because his work very much is carrying on. Roll forward maybe a year after he died and I started to, um, one of the things Archangel Metatron asked me to do was to do teaching where we're combining the angelic frequencies and the shamanic frequencies which is where the elements come in and when I started to write about the water element in particular um, I was just so surprised one day because I'm so used to channeling Metatron and I'm sitting in this very spot where I'm talking to you now and I was writing the manual to go with the workshop and I just became aware of this other presence in the room and as I am now, he's standing exactly in the same position that he was um, a couple of years ago. He's standing on my right hand side, but he has a very, um, he was Japanese. So they, you know, I've never been to Japan. I'd like to come to Japan. I will come to Japan, but certainly compared to maybe um, some of us in the West, um, my impression of the Japanese race is they seem to be very graceful, very respectful. In terms of body space, I mean, I've met the man, you know, very, um, I don't know how to express it really, but very compact, um, you know, certainly us, the English, we can be quite loud and myself included in that. And there is just this quiet dignity with a lot of Japanese people and he very much had that. And I just became aware of this very quiet, dignified presence beside me. It was like, yeah, who is that? And um, and then I, then I saw the slippers on his feet and they, it, again, it was all very symbolic of, um, you know, Metatron. If I, I mean, not that Metatron's ever shown me himself in this way, but I guess if he did, because Metatron's a very doing energy, you know, very gung-ho. All of those of you that have watched me for a number of years know that about him. He'd probably come in in a pair of boots, you know, it's like, let's get to work. And here was Dr. Emoto in just this pair of like silk slippers almost like literally glid into, glided into the room very quietly, like he's done today. But it's so interesting because very quietly, very respectfully, very gracefully, 
but with a presence which will not be ignored and won't go away until you've basically listened to whatever it whatever the teaching is that he wants to impart and this is very much I feel whatever's going to come through today is about teaching for us right now in our world okay so in um strengthening the teaching that has been coming through from Metatron over the last couple of months. My last couple of videos that I've done, which have been about changes that are going on in the world, difficulties that we've got going on in the world, lack of peace. And it feels as though Dr. Emoto is coming in to say, OK, let's look at that and let's see what the element of water can do to help bring about greater peace between nations. And that's what we're going to do. And I already feel his lovely soft presence. I will just say on my desk, again, this probably triggered his arrival because I wasn't aware he was going to arrive today. But I see now it all makes sense. Look what I placed on my desk last night. <laughs> I never have this on my desk. It's a beautiful shell. And the reason I put it was because it's got some crystals that have been out on my balcony because I was making um, a spray for the rose in a child and also the water elemental. So it, and I, they were just so beautiful and they looked so nice together. I thought, I've, I, I don't want to put those away in boxes. I want to have them out on my desk. But of course, they beautifully sum up the energy of water, which of course is what this man was all about. So in my shell, I've got the icosahedron and the icosahedron is platonic solid that links into the element of water and into the sacral. This one is a very pale amethyst. It's very beautiful. Um, I've got a Druzy shell, which is absolutely gorgeous, fossilised Druzy. Um, I've got an Elat stone, okay, Elat stone. I've got a Shiva stone. I've got Aquamarine. And the others, I've got some Mango Calcite and I've got a, an Inner Child crystal there as well. But I, I just suddenly realised, oh gosh, I've got these crystals on my desk and what a surprise. Dr. Emoto is here, I should have known. So I'm thanking him for coming on behalf of all of us, I think. So let's get to it, let's see what he wants to say. I'm going to spray the water elemental. Okay, so let's just show this to you again. Let's connect into the color. This was also um, the spray that he helped me to birth um, a couple of years ago. And I will also, he's just, he's got a bit of a sense of humour because he's reminding me I made a mistake. Um, and I'm fine about admitting my mistakes, by the way, guys. I'm not at all proud of, I'm, I don't mind at all because, um, what well, he say? It's not a mistake, it's all learning because you can't ever get better unless you make a few little mistakes along the way. Because the first lot of elemental sprays that I made, I put some, um, uh, mica into. Those of you that know what mica is, it's like this very, very fine um, pearless, pearlescent powder. And they looked very shimmering and very beautiful, but it sort of clogged up the, um, the pumps a bit. So we discounted using mica quite early on and they don't have it anymore. But I remember because in those days I used to make every single bottle myself. Tracy now does them for me, but in those days I made every single one myself. So I was in this room, I was standing against that wall, I was filling all these bottles up and um, it, 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 well it was to be honest, it was, it, I ignored, I'm sorry, I did sort of ignore him because as I added the mica to the pure water in the bottle, I could hear him almost like, keep it pure, keep it pure, you don't need that, you don't need what's artificial put in there. And um, because they look so pretty and I was rather spellbound by the sort of, um, the swirling beautifulness of it, forgetting the efficacy and also forgetting the fact that I was putting something in that was a little bit more cosmetic than pure. Um, of course, I made, you know, I soon realised that I shouldn't have done that. Um, but it, it was just so interesting because again, he didn't come in in a very sort of heavy handed way and sort of like grab the bottle out of my hand and say, you're doing it wrong. It was very respectful. It was like, okay, well, no, she needs to learn and we'll, we'll allow that. But I'm just gonna, for the record, Amanda, you know, you don't need to put that in. Um, it's funny, I've had this card on my desk all, well, I got this deck of cards on Saturday or Sunday. They've only been in my house a couple of days, two days. And what, I don't even know what deck it is. It's the Acacia Tarot by Sandra Ann Ta Taylor and, and Sharon Ann Klinger. 
so I'll do a reading with these later on in the week but I haven't even got to know them but every time I keep um, asking for a card for myself or for my work um, this one's come out four times in a row and it's the one it's called the um, the master artisan and um, it's rather lovely you know and I'm, I hope you don't feel I'm being egotistical here but you know it feels like Metatron saying to me you're doing okay it's about sharing your gifts with other people but in this scenario it's like I was the student sitting there and this is Dr. Emoto and it was like he was trying to teach me okay and of course the student always makes mistakes that's how you learn um so yeah again that was a sign that he was he was coming in again all right So let's just ask Dr. Emoto to speak through me. And I'd like to thank, I'm thanking him before he steps fully into me to, um, for coming forward. He's saying he, um, he hasn't reincarnated back, but he's, he's chosen to come forward and teach, um, very quickly upon the earth plane. Um, he, he hasn't really been dead for that long, um, but I'm not the only person that's channeling him. There are other people that are channeling him. There are other people that he's working through. He'll be working through some of you that are watching this. Um, and it, it, it was very much his intention to um, keep on teaching and helping from the other side. So he's saying for all of those of you that loved him that he, he hasn't gone anywhere. Um, in many ways, he's now more accessible, he's saying. Um, he's reminding me that on that last, on the time that I saw him, which was a year before he died, he was getting a little bit weary of travelling. Um, he had been away from his wife in particular, who you could tell that he just adored for, for a long period of time, and he was really wanting to get back to her. Um, I think we sang happy birthday to her, I seem to remember. It's coming back to me now. So, um, yeah, there was just this feeling of, but he had, he, his whole energy was very much that time was short and he had to get around to as many different places as possible whilst he was still alive in an earthly body. But now that he has um, crossed the veil and his spirit, he is accessible to many more people. Um, and he is saying that anybody that wants to work with him um, and be one of his students, he is willing to teach you okay so um he's he's just got this beautiful open um energy that is all inclusive and um bars nobody he still has a special place in his heart for the japanese people he's showing me the fukushima um nuclear plant where there is still the need for um huge cleanup and contamination around those seas um, he was worried about that in this life. He's still worried about it where he is now. And again, he's asking all of us, wherever we may be around the world, whether we are close to Japan or whether we are further away from Japan, to please send healing energy to um, the waters around that station and around the island of Japan as well. He's showing... Um, okay, I never thought of this before. Uh, it's a bit of a mind bender for me, but I'm just have to give what I'm being shown. Um, Japan is an island, very much like the UK is an island. So he's showing me the water that is underneath Japan in the same way that water would be underneath any landmass. Um, we tend to think that um, water is only in the gaps in between the bits of earth. Um, and obviously that's correct in terms of what we can see and we can touch and feel and, you know, um, flow into. But he's also talking about the water underneath the earth, underneath particular islands on the earth. And I'm particularly being shown Japan. So um, sending healing there as well. What do you wish to say today, Mr. Remo Dr. Emoto? He says, he says you can call me Mr. Emoto. No. He had a twi He always had a twinkle. He had a twinkle in his eye. I remember that when I met him. Um, okay, he's talking about peace. 
He's talking about the need for peace. He's talking about the fact that we can learn a lot from water at this time. Um, he says water um, does not understand any border or any geographical um, fence or barrier, basically. Um, he is saying that water always finds a way. Um, water always finds a way. And that we too can find a way towards peace in our world by connecting into the waters within our own body. He's saying water is within every part of you. I'm being drawn to the eyes um, in particular. It's as though we think about water in our body linked into particular organs, maybe in the brain, the stomach, the throat, the mouth. You know when you feel thirsty and you have that feeling in your throat and your mouth. But he's saying there are so many other organs within the body all organs in the body, in fact, require sufficient water. And I'm being drawn to the eyes. I'm looking at this photo and we're, we're both wearing glasses in this. And he's talking about the number of people around the world who have eye strain as well, um, from being online increasingly, more than any other generation have ever been. And he is saying that to ease pressure around the eyes, to ease the strain on your eyes, um, to also ease headaches and things like that. Um, many people are not drinking enough water. So, um, and he's saying people aren't drinking enough good water either. They're drinking contaminated water. It's the whole thing about, which is what he spent his whole life teaching us, which is that you need to bless water. And when you drink water that has been blessed, you are able to, um, eradicate much of the negativity that may be within that water. The truth is that many of us live in countries, I remember he's, he talked about this when he was alive, where the quality of water, particularly in cities, is very, very poor. It's heavily chlorinated, it's um, got fluoride in it. Um, I'm pretty sure he did do research, it might even be in this book, about the quality of water in places like New York City, um, other cities around the world, it would be exactly the same. Um, and it's quite depressing reading. But the whole point is that wherever the water is in your world, um, he's saying we should give thanks to it because it is the gift of life. And we can um, remove any toxicity by the simple art of blessing it. And as a simple way to do that, I mean, I'll show you here, I've got on my desk, some of you have seen this before. You don't have to have anything posh like this. This happened to be a gift that was given to me, but you can see that um, on the bottom of my carafe of water, I've got the flower of life, okay? So this sits on my desk. I drink a couple of these a day at least. Um, and uh, the water is just water from my kitchen sink. You know, nothing special at all. The water picks up the energy of the flower of life and um, it helps. And I also, when I pour it in in the morning, I maybe ask for a particular quality for this water to be. Maybe it's to do with detoxing, it's to do with health, it's to do with energy, it's to do with um, me loving myself more, whatever it is, okay? So the simple act of doing that um, and, you know, just, let me just do it now. I've got a glass of water here on my desk putting my hand over the water and asking for this water to help replenish my body, rejuvenate my body and restore my body to optimum levels of health. So be it and it is done. Water is takes on the energy of what it's exposed to. So if you've had a glass of water and you've had an argument in the room pour it away and pour yourself a new one. It's funny actually, in the news today, there's um, 
a story that I have no idea why it's going all around the world and there's part of me that feels really sorry for the woman actually because I just think it's a storm in a teacup but basically there's a story somewhere in America there's a little girl she's been selling bottles of water in the street and it sounds like it might have been a particularly hot day in New York I think where it was and the woman wanted to open her windows sounds like the child had been trying to sell this water all day maybe there was a commotion going on not condoning what the lady did she went down she photographed the child um trying to sell this water pretended she was calling the police or maybe called the police i don't know um and it's all exploded you know this woman's all across the media she's being hate shamed um apologies are not being accepted and it's all over water i mean in a way it's sort of you know, that water would have been contaminated even if it had been sold. You know, they were arguing over something which is precious. And um, it's really important that the water that you drink remains pure, okay? So you are able to, um, to gift that to yourself quite easily. I got some cards here on the table, which are actually Dr. Ramoto's water crystal oracle cards. Please don't ask me where I got them because I got them in a shop in Canada. Uh, in the middle of nowhere. I can't remember where it was. There was one deck left. You'll have to Google them. I'm sorry, I don't know where you can get them because I know you're all going to ask me. But it, it, they're called the Water Crystal Oracle Cards based on the work of Masaro Emoto. I really can't tell you any more than that. That's what, the, that's what it looks like anyway. So let's just pull one. And what they basically have on them is they have crystals, okay? And then there's a, you know, whatever the, whatever the crystal is about is what the card's about. So let's just see what the message is from Dr. Emoto and we'll carry on with our channeling. <laughs> He's saying water is freely available and very pure where I am now. <laughs> There's no fighting over it. There's no short supply of it. And it's not that it's needed to drink in terms because your spirit, it's more that it's symbolic. It's a symbolic energy of life and refreshment and has a cleansing energy, just as it does here on earth. And there's a bridge between heaven and earth across which water can travel as well. Okay, which card? Peace of mind. Yeah, I'm not surprised he says that. Peace of mind. So this is the crystal that's linked into when water was exposed to the words um, peace of mind. That's what it looked like, okay? So can you imagine, I don't have one to show you here, but can you imagine what your mind looks like when you're not at peace? Um, it would basically probably appear completely and utterly scrambled and um, messed up basically <laughs> and crowded and cramped and you know we all know what that feels like this is what peace of mind looks like so how are we going to get there You're fighting outside of yourself, the fighting in the outside world is a mirror of the fighting that exists within yourself and within the waters within your own self. This includes many things. This includes the energy of the voice of the shadow versus the voice of light, the two sides of you battling it out. One may be repressed, one may be given free reign. The voice of self-criticism, the voice of ego, the voice of your father, the voice of your mother, 
the voice of your teacher. The voice of anyone that chastised you. The voice of God. The voice of your higher self. The voice of your own needs versus the voice of others' needs. What you listen to and what you block. All these different voices, thoughts, energies within you all are carried via the medium of water within you. The need for stillness of the waters within. The stillness comes from stopping, from meditating, from being mindful, from not doing too much all at once, from prioritising, from doing what is possible, not what isn't, from listening to yourself, from responding. I'm shown somebody who is I'm shown two images, either a boat or somebody on a surfboard was the first one that I was shown. Somebody on a surfboard. And somebody on a surfboard understands that they have to listen to water, that they can't control it, that the waves are either high or the waves are low or the waves are either still. And you respond to, to that. You don't try and control or dictate or add in different aspects or itineraries to something which needs to be yielded to rather than controlled. The waters within you, the emotions within you need to be allowed to flow and for you to move with them in a rhythm in perfect timing at the right time, in grace, in love, in divine submission. Not many are able to do this because the waters within are churned up or stagnant, too much or too little. Be like the flowing river, not the stagnant pond. Be like the sea that understands the ebb and flow and that movement is required. Tune in now to the, to the waters within your own body. Become aware of the last time you drank pure, blessed water in an unhurried, unstressed way. Not just because it's dinner time or breakfast time, and that is a time that society says you need to have a drink, but from having really listened to your own body and answered it with the gift and the blessing of pure water. Not carbonated sugary drinks, not highly caffeinated drinks, not alcohol, but pure clean water. Chosen by you to replenish your body, feed its cells and its organs, and bring renewal. When was the last time you stood underneath a shower of water and truly appreciated the gift that it gave you? To wash clean 
your outer body and also to let go of your stresses and your troubles to connect into that water and visualize stresses tension and turmoil flowing away from you down the plug hole when was the last time you turned on a tap and gave real deep meaningful gratitude for the gift of that water that so effortlessly pumps through them when was the last time you thought about the person on the other side of the world who walks miles for fresh water to drink each day. The waters in which you bathe, the waters that you drink, hold commonality. They belong to all and are shared by all. Water arriving from rain via the clouds can go to any country, to any continent, across any border, across any nationality or colour of skin or creed, and bring that water or deny that water. He's taking me to areas of the world where there is parched land. Parts of Australia I'm seeing, parts of South Africa. Other places too, where there is a chronic shortage. And other places around the world where there is too much. He says this is reflecting the imbalance between those who have and those who have not. Water is simply another resource and it is another energy. Start to think of water as energy. <clears throat> He's saying that many of us have read the books <clears throat> with regard to abundance. And money and flow and how we understand that we can block money, we can block abundance, we can block riches. Because money is an energy. It's not just a coin or a piece of paper. It's an energy. And if you have fear about having too much of it or too little of it, poverty consciousness, you can really block the flow of money. This is something that the spiritual community have talked about for many years, he says. And yet water is exactly the same. Water is energy. The state of the imbalance around the world with regard to water reflects the imbalance in the world at large, which is to do with many things. To do with power versus no power, wealth versus no wealth, rich versus poor, famine versus plenty. Again, just link into the waters within your body for one moment. seeing this beautiful chalice filled with water 
and this chalice which has water within it. The water within it is imbued with health, life-giving properties. rejuvenation, vitality. It's like the elixir of life, he's saying. And it's as though it's offered to you. And as it's offered to you, he's just asking you to note with no judgment on his part, are you able to then pass on that cup, having not drunk all of it, to the person in need beside you. Do you need the whole cup? Do you drink it all greedily down because you need every single last drop of that for yourself? Or can you share it? Those that are willing to share it become aware of the energy of the one who comes forward to share your cup with you. This may be a child, it may be a person from a different culture, it could be somebody you know, it could be somebody very close to you or somebody very far away that you have no awareness of. It's the act of sharing the gift of water. And his promise to you is that if we as a world can do that, and this is all very symbolic the way he's talking, it's as though to be given the gift of water and to drink some of it for yourself and then to give some to another, and remember water equals life, what spirit then do is that they almost like top up the third part of it. It's like I'm seeing a unity of three Maybe this is the miracle type energy that Christ brought forward in the last video that I did right at the end. It's, it's almost, we're back to the two fishes and the five loaves again. It's almost as though Dr. Emoto is, it is, it's a very similar message to, to the Christ message that came through. It's this thing about sharing, how important it is to share. Um, maybe sharing, guys, is one of these... Do you know, I think it's a fifth dimensional property that we're, we're needing to look at maybe a little bit more. Um, maybe it's obvious, but I don't think it is. I don't think it is. Um, this whole 5D consciousness, what is it? What does it mean? What are we actually gonna have to do? Those of you that follow my Facebook page know that, you know, we've really been carrying on the conversation that started with the last video that I made on the immigration and migration issue and some been some really intelligent conversation on there and you know what we're trying to grapple with is the whole thing about what are we supposed to be doing as a community none of us have the answers yet none of us know um, but more than anything I feel what I'm, we're being shown is that these are energies that we're asked to embody it's not the fact that you physically are going to have a, you know, a chalice of water and you're asked to go to, I don't know, Timbuktu and offer it to somebody. It's the simple act of sharing. It's, it's, it's to do with gestures, gestures being very important, um, sharing what we have. And what is one of the most precious resources that we have in this world? It's water. Sort of. I have to say I bring my mum in here my mum's energy because my mum has very little she doesn't have a lot of money at all and um it might be a bit morbid to say it but she's always said to me that um when she dies she wants to you know and they have the collection funeral collection she wants it to be for water water aid and um I ought to really do it when she's alive to be honest I ought to just set it up in her name because it's really important to her. She just, you know, she's not being a real do-gooder or anything like that. It's just she can't bear the fact that there are people around the world who are drinking dirty water when they don't have to. It's a gesture. It's a gesture. And I think that's what Dr. Emoto is talking about. Um, sharing. 
Sharing rhymes with caring. I'm also being shown by Christ the communion. Again, the symbology of the communion service. It's all about breaking bread and sharing it. It's about a cup that gets offered round. But the whole point is that you're partaking and you're sharing of something that is divine. Let's not get into the whole Christianity thing. This is more to do with you are sharing something that is divine, that is that has been given to us by the divine. So in the communion service, supposedly it's the blood of Christ, the bread of Christ. What we're being asked to share here is the water of life. So maybe if we boil it down to ourselves and our own bodies, remember we're 70% water. What are we hoarding on to? What are we being greedy about? What are we being asked to share? It doesn't have to be material things, guys, either. Okay, it's really important that we state that. This can be to do with a sharing of knowledge, a sharing of wisdom, um, a sharing of cookies. <laughs> you know, it's it's anything where love is behind it. You're doing it for the right reason. You're not doing it from ego. You're doing it because there's just a desire to either help or inspire or educate or I don't know anything. It's funny actually this morning I've got a friend who works as a university lecturer. She's a marketing lecturer and um, she doesn't She's not really into my work. Um, she's more my husband's friend. Well, she's my friend as well, but historically she was my husband's friend or is my husband's friend. And um, she contacted me out of the blue today and she said, would, would I be interested in um, going in and speaking to her um, undergraduates in the autumn about my business, basically, and how I've, how I've got to where I've, where I've got to? Um, and I thought about it and I thought, oh, I'd love to do that. I'd love to do that. And it's nothing to do with ego, it's to do with, I just love to share that. And I really hope that maybe some of the little tips that I've learned along the way, um, even if there's one person that listens to that who might in, be inspired by it, that would be fantastic. And it doesn't mean they're going to go off and do what I'm doing, but they could go off and take some of the principles that I believe in and, and make a success of whatever else, whatever they want to be doing in life. Um, it's sharing. And I think it's a perfect example when you share of the whole thing about you are giving and then you receive back, but you're receiving something back with no expectation. You know, it comes back in a different way. So this all stemmed from this discussion on water and Dr. Emoto. Um, anything else, Dr. Emoto, to say? water ceremonies he's talking about. Okay, so he spent much of his life doing water ceremonies around the world. And you can look at his website, and you can look at how he did that. Um, but it's very simple. It's about um, getting some water in a, a bowl, some, some, something to contain it, blessing it, saying some sacred prayers over it. We did it when I was in um, Canada and in Virginia a couple of years ago. It was led by one of you that's probably watching this, Lorraine, hi, if you're watching. Um, you know, many of you probably watching do this already, but it's the whole thing about ceremony, the importance of ceremony, um, because it's about giving back to the waters. So I live right near the sea. I've also got the river five minutes down the road from me. So I'm very close to, to water. It's that thing about I could just pick up a, I've said this before, pick up a stone in the park today. If I pick up that stone and I imbue it with love and health and restore, restorative abilities and, you know, ask the divine to work through this and then push it into the water, that stone is imbuing the water with all of that positive energy. Um, you know, and of course, when two or more are gathered in my name, it becomes even more powerful. Um, so many of the old ancient cultures and still to this day, many cultures around the world, they understand this. They understand the ceremonial aspect of water and how important it is. Um, Dr. Emoto. Any other message for us or our world today? Oh, 
He's just shown me this most beautiful fountain. I don't know if it actually exists on the earth plane, but it's a beautiful fountain. Um, and I think I do know where it is actually. It's a place I used to go to as a child, but it doesn't really matter. It's more the fact that um, I'm being shown the way that in a fountain of water, the way the water rises up and it dances, it just, um, it's majestic, it's sparkling, it's alive. You know, you, you, you become aware of the life force of water when it's, when it's very beautiful like that. Same as with a beautiful waterfall in nature. You know, you stand back and you're just in awe of it. And he's saying, be just as much in awe of the water within your own body as the water in majestic places in nature. You know, I've stood in front of Niagara Falls and it's just amazing. And you think, wow, the power of that water. Well, what about the power of the water within you? Okay, how's it feeling? Is it feeling a bit toxic? Is it, are you feeling dehydrated? Have you been telling yourself you're this, you're that, you can't, you know, you're, you're full of fear. Reverse that, he's saying, you know, you have the power to reverse it. You have the ability to master the waters in your body. And the more of us that do this, we will then start to see greater peace in our world. So many of people are walking around with agitated, um, toxic, um, acidic water within them. And he's saying it's a bit like um, an old radiator, you know, an old radiator when, when the water's within it, it gets all gunky and contaminated and horrible. He said some people are walking around in that state. That's what the water in their body is looking like. And they don't it's like they don't care and he's saying you need to care it's almost um this comes into it's one of the first categories of self-love do you love yourself enough to actually sit stop everything that you're doing connect to this glass of water and just drink it and nothing else matters apart from this going down your throat and going where it needs to go into your body There's a film, I can't think what film, it, what film it is. It might even have been on TV. I think it was a TV series. <laughs> it's, I can't even remember what the TV series was. It doesn't matter. Some of you might be able to remind me. It was a British TV series, I think. And it was somebody who'd been in, I don't know, captivity or something like that. And they hadn't, they hadn't had any nice food or... Um, nice wine or anything like that they'd been fed a very bland diet and and then they got given something it was like a potato but it's like they hadn't had a potato for so long and they ate it and it was like it was the most amazing thing they'd ever tasted in their life and every single taste bud in their mouth just exploded and all that mattered was that taste of potato and it's the same with water when you actually connect to it when you really connect to it, it's the gift of life. Think of people in hospitals when they're really, really sick and they have to be propped up. I'm seeing people in hospital and they're propped up and it's like they try and you drip some water. I remember somebody, you know, I saw dying recently, or was this year, and it's like trying to drip, just a couple of drips into their mouth, just to keep, keep them, keep it moist, keep it lubricated. But it's almost like, that's so symbolic about just keeping the drops of life going. Every single day you have the option to either consciously drink or not. And it's not good enough, he's saying, the teas, the coffees, the fizzy drinks, all of that. It's not saying you can't have it, but whenever I have his energy very close to me, like I do today, he's, he's, he, he is a bit sort of like, Mm, you know, he's watching me. It's like, okay, you've had a cup of tea. You really now need two glasses of water. <laughs> he's just the most loving, beautiful man. Let me just see if I can channel his energy so you can feel it. Dr. Emoto. Just give some of your energy to those watching. Thank you. And thank you for being with us. 
to just sit back and receive. This is what I do in workshops. I'm just asking his energy to come through me to you who are watching. Just perfect peace. What a beautiful, beautiful energy. So one final card from him. He's laughing and he said, I didn't know these cards existed. <laughs> there, there you go. One of the things when he came to Bournemouth and um, did his talk, um, he played, we're back to John Lennon guys, he played John Lennon's Imagine. And what he did was he had grown crystals, ice crystals within water that had developed to the sound of Imagine. And the song was played and you could see the crystal growing in the, it was like, you know, time stamped, which obviously had taken a number of days or hours to do. Oh my God, it was beautiful. Right, final message. Summer, <laughs> yeah. Well, I know some of you don't have summer, but you know, we have got summer here at the moment and for us, it's quite unusual. We've got a whole week of summer. Oh, look at that. The next card up is winter. Isn't he sweet? It's like he's not gonna leave anybody out. I said he was all inclusive. So whether we're in the Northern Hemisphere or in the Southern Hemisphere, I just feel like he's sending you a big hello and a big hug. And he's just asking us to hold the peace within ourself, within the waters, within our own body. Hope you enjoyed that guys. I'll be back again this week to do another video at some point. Um, a few different ideas coming up, what that might be. Quite like to just do a general read in terms of what's going on with the energy, but um, also somebody sent me a really interesting email in asking me to have a look at self-sabotage, which I think could be quite good because we're, we're all really you know, able to do that from time to time. So anyway, let's really just try and remember Dr. Emoto's words today and um, be at peace with the waters within us and then we'll see we'll have a chance for peace outside of ourselves much love everyone bye bye